scriptures. And uh, I found myself in this wonderful psalm, and uh, I got blessed, and the Lord blessed me with a little thought, and I hope it will bless you tonight. Psalm 18 begins, verse number 1. David is writing. He says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. My heart was blessed. Lord, as all the songs uplifted you from the very first congregational song, saved, saved, saved. Lord, I'm glad I can stand and say I'm saved. Oh, Lord, I'm not much, but I'm saved. Names written down in heaven. Sin's been washed in the blood of Jesus. Uh, been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, Lord, my conversation's recorded in heaven. My citizenship's in heaven. Lord, one of these days, uh, I'll be there with you in heaven. I bless your holy name. Lord, it's nothing that I've done. It's all that you did on the cross of Calvary. And we bless your holy name. Now, Father, I thank you for the good singing. Oh, Lord, uh, the singing that helped us. And remind us that, Lord, you are in control. And, Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that you're our Lord. And David said, you're my shepherd. I'm glad you're our shepherd, Lord. And God, I enjoy the good testimonies. And Lord, I enjoy just reading them verses I've read. Lord, you're a good God. We bless your holy name. We pray for the next few minutes that, Lord, you'd show up in a big way. You'd manifest yourself. You'd step out from behind the shadows. Uh, reveal your mighty arm to your people. Lord, as we prayed before the service, Lord, I realize many of your people have labored hard this week. Uh, they've faced adversity this week. Uh, some of them are here tonight, but they got broken hearts because of their family not being with them. Uh, Lord, there's uh, many, many things going on behind the scenes, uh, but yet here they are. They found themselves in the house of God, and so God, I pray you'd show up and you'd help them, you'd strengthen them, you'd bless them. And God, you do great things. Use this unworthy vessel now. Get glory to your glorious name. Uh, Father, save that one nearest hell. Uh, and God, certainly revive the saints of God. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. In reading Psalm 18, I find that David uh, says, I will. There's some I wills in here of David. Can I say, first of all, he says in verse number 1, I will love thee, O Lord. Can I say, uh, uh, he's easy to love. He's altogether lovely. First uh, uh, John four nineteen says, we love him because he first loved us. Uh, 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 Jeremiah tells us uh, uh, that he has loved us with an everlasting love. Uh, uh, long before you and I ever was, uh, he looked ahead in time, uh, saw our need of a Savior, uh, saw our wicked state, but he loved us anyway. Uh, he saw you in the gutter where you was. Uh, he saw you on that bar stool where you was. Uh, he saw you uh, uh, wrapped in sin or just a lost church member sitting in church. Uh, uh, but I'm telling you, he loved you anyway. Uh, hey, he saw your need. Uh, he said, I'll go to Calvary. Uh, I'll pay their sin debt. Uh, I'll demonstrate my love for them. Uh, my dear friends, and he allowed somebody to tell you about the love of God. Uh, he allowed somebody to preach to you about the love of God. Uh, and that night when you bowed uh, and you trusted the Lord as your personal, Savior, uh, you fell in love with him. Uh, hey, David, uh, I, I don't know where he fell in love with the Lord. If he's back on the back 40, uh, tending his father's sheep when he wrote all these psalms, uh, if it was before that, uh, I don't know uh, if it's in the cave of Adullam, uh, if it was in the palace, uh, but there's somewhere in David's life uh, when he said, uh, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Uh, hey, uh, uh, there ought to be something God's people get down deep inside of them. Uh, I'll never be ashamed of the Lord, uh, and I want the world to know uh, I love him. Uh, 
And David said, I will love thee, uh, O Lord. Uh, can I say the second time I find an I will of David is in verse 3. He said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Uh, so shall I be saved uh, from mine enemies. Uh, David not only said, I will love thee, O Lord. Uh, he said, I will call upon thee. Uh, hey, I've got good news. Uh, the Lord's line is never busy. Uh, uh, you never go to voicemail with the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, he said, come unto me, uh, and I will answer thee, uh, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Uh, hey, he bid us to come to the throne of grace uh, to find help in time of need. Uh, uh, David learned a great secret. Uh, uh, David was the mighty warrior. Phil and I was talking about that fourth service. Uh, uh, David could grab the harp uh, and begin to sing and soothe the congregation. Uh, or he could grab a sword uh, and go to slaying Philistines. Uh, he was a greatly feared man. Uh, but David learned, uh, even though he took down a giant, uh, even though he slew Philistines most of his life, uh, David learned uh, the battle wasn't his, uh, but it was the Lord's. Uh, he told Goliath, you come to me with spirit and sword. Uh, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, David learned uh, uh, the strength of David was not in David. Uh, he learned the strength of David was on his knees, uh, and he could call upon the Lord. Uh, and throughout the Psalms, uh, he says, the Lord delivered me from mine enemies. Uh, he said, I will love thee. I will call upon thee. Can I help you, child of God? You ought to love Jesus and tell Him every day. And you ought to never be, never be slack on calling upon Him. Uh, he says you have not, because you ask not. If you want to put your Superman cape on and try and figure out things and handle things yourself, He'll let you try. It's a whole lot better if you just realize ahead of time, uh, uh, in your strength, you'll do nothing but fail. Just call upon Him uh, and lean on His strength. Uh, lean on His understanding. Uh, lean on the goodness and grace of the Lord. Uh, I find another I will of David in Psalm 18. Look down at verse number 49. He says, Therefore will I, or I will, therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Now David said, I'll love thee. David said, I'll call upon thee. But here David says, I I I'll give thanks unto thee. Uh, can I say he's worthy to be thanked? Uh, uh, you want to get God on your side, uh, uh, humble yourself uh, and appreciate the goodness of God uh, and the grace of God. Uh, do you realize all that we deserve from God uh, is to be thrown off into hell? Uh, uh, but I'm not going to hell. Uh, uh, Jesus took my hell on Calvary. Uh, I'm going to glory. Uh, uh, we ought to thank God. Uh, we ought to show our appreciation. Uh, you ought to thank Him for the Word of God. Uh, you ought to thank Him for the house of God. We come and worship. Uh, you ought to thank Him for the family of God uh, uh, who's there and prays for you, who encourages you, who worships with you. Uh, you ought to thank God for those people in your life that sing and is a blessing to you. Uh, you ought to thank God for the man of God that studies and preaches to you. Uh, you ought to thank God for everything He's blessed you with. Uh, you ought to thank Him for your health. Uh, you ought to thank Him for the food in your cupboard. Uh, you ought to thank Him for gas in your tank. Uh, uh, Biden's trying to do away with it. Are you listening? Uh, you ought to thank him for every choice blessing. Uh, but notice what he said. He says, Therefore will I give thanks unto the Lord. Can I say this? It's easy to stand up here and say, I want to thank God for saving me. I want to thank God for blessing me. But look what he says. He says, I'm going to thank the Lord among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. Mm, you know, Brother John, it'd be easy for you to tell people about the Lord in here. Mm, but on the job there, when you're calling and ordering parts and you're asking a lady on the other end, do you know the Lord? Uh, 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 when the police officers walk in, stand up, Christian. 
They're pretty big boys usually. They could be intimidating. Especially when they got that um, Glock on their hip and they got that uniform on and they got that badge shining up and they pull it in that cruiser. Uh, 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 it's easy to say, well, uh, 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 he won't want to hear what I have to say. Uh, uh, David said, uh, it don't matter if they're giants uh, or if they're little widow maids. Uh, if they're a heathen, it don't matter. Uh, I'm going to give thanks unto God in front of the heathen. Uh, I'm going to sing praise unto the Lord in front of the heathen. Uh, I I'm not ashamed of what God's done in my life. Uh, I don't care who they are. Uh, they need to know uh, the one behind David is, J is the Lord. Uh, and I'm going to serve Him and live for Him and bless Him and praise Him all the days of my life. I wonder how full the church house be tonight if we uh, did a little more praising and thanking God in front of the heathen. Next time somebody complains about the weather, you're out at Walmart and somebody says, well, the weather. By the way, they got it right again today. It's supposed to rain all day. We had a little shower about 1030. Lying weathermen. Next time somebody's complaining about the leather, weather, you ought to say, well, bless the Lord, it's awful hot in hell today. Hmm? Huh? You probably get through the line quicker. They'll probably all say, oh, you just go right ahead. Oh, uh, I never forget one time when Jordan was little. As you can see back there, he ain't little no more. He was little. He was at Kroger's. I'd been Remke's. I don't know. It was one of the grocery stores. And he started singing, uh, Standing on the Promises. He's in the cart. He says, Sing it, Dad. So we're going through Kro Kroger's. Standing on the Promises with Christ my King. Hey, you know what? People will get in your way. Hey, if I was singing ACDC, they wouldn't give it another, another thought about it. Uh, but if you thank God, and if you sing praise unto God in front of heathens, if nothing else, it'll let them know you've got something they don't have. We see the I wills of David. I'm interested in verse number three because it is a wonderful verse. He said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Can I say, David did not live a perfect life. But David is called in the scriptures a man after God's own heart. Can I say, in David's personal testimony, he blew it. You don't know the life of David. He's guilty of adultery. And he's also guilty of murder because he had Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed. Hmm? But can I say this? Go read Psalms 51. You'll see where David repents and gets right with God. And David went on to do more for God after that event than he did before God before that event. But can I say, in what David did that was wrong was wrong, Brother Bob. But one thing David did right is he praised the Lord. Can I say that that deal with Uriah cost David four sons? He had four funerals for four boys. But can I say, even in all of that, he still blessed the Lord, and he still praised the Lord. He realized... Uh, 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 that God was so great to even bless him after his great sin. He praised the Lord. He says, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Regardless of your circumstances, regardless uh, of your lot in life, uh, regardless of what goes on around you, regardless of who's in the White House and who's in Congress, he's still worthy to be praised. I want to preach with God's help for just a minute on wonderful and worthy. Because he's wonderful. Isaiah 9, 6 says that's one of his names. Wonderful. And he's worthy. He's worthy of everything we have. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our, 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 our uh, uh, adoration. He's worthy of uh, 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 all of our loyalty. He's worthy of everything in our lives. Uh, He's wonderful and He's worthy. Say, preacher, why is He wonderful and He's worthy? I'm glad you ask. 
Can I say, first of all, he's wonderful and he's worthy because of his stability. Look in verse number 2 again. It says, the Lord is my rock. He didn't say the Lord's quicksand. He didn't say the Lord's a teeter-totter. He's flipping all the time. No, he says, the Lord is my rock or my stability. I've got news for you. Things in our life are shifting sand. Uh, uh, things in our life are subject to flip and flop. Uh, uh, one day you're doing good. The next day your health might be in the, in the commode. Uh, 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 one day everything's great. Uh, uh, the next day uh, you might be on the bottom rung of the ladder. Uh, uh, but I've got good news. Uh, we got an anchor within the veil. Uh, one who is the epitome of stability. Uh, he's the rock of ages. Uh, and there is no shadow of turning in him. Uh, he is faithful and true. Uh, you can put your confidence in him you put your trust in him hey his yeas are yeas and his nays are nays he said he changeth not he's the same yesterday today and forevermore the beauty of the scriptures is because he doesn't change they don't change we can always go back to the word of God it's the same as it was yesterday it'll be the same tomorrow because it's forever settled in heaven. Uh, he is wonderful and worthy because of his stability. Uh, can I say he's unmovable? No matter what goes on, he's unmoved. Nothing will change his mind. Can I say this? Uh, he's unchanging. Mm, what a blessing. Uh, every politician, when they're running, make promises. As soon as they get elected, they change. I'm glad the Lord's not that way. Uh, aren't you glad he said uh, that uh, uh, all that come to him, he'd no wise cast them out? Aren't you glad that he promised us everlasting life? Now, if he was changing, what if he uh, uh, midway through the game said, uh, well, no, you don't have everlasting life. You just have temporary life. Hmm. Wouldn't, wouldn't be able to have a lot of confidence in him, would we? He wouldn't be wonderful and worthy, would he? He's unmovable, he's unchanging, and he's undaunted. He's not sitting on a rocking chair worried about what's going on in this world. Everything's coming down just the way he said it would. Hmm? He's undaunted. It, it doesn't bother him Joe Biden's in the White House because Joe Biden's not running this thing anyway. Uh, Joe Biden don't know, know what color socks to put on any day. Uh I want to tell you, Jesus is undaunted. He's wonderful and worthy because of his stability. Listen, most of you know my granddaddy was a, was a pastor. He's the greatest preacher I ever have ever heard. He preached me out of hell. I love my granddaddy. He say more in 20 minutes than these, most of these guys today say in, in two weeks. Uh, but my granddaddy couldn't pastor the way he pastored today. It's a whole different game today. You see, back 40, 50 years ago, people worked with their hands more. People depended on God more. They knew if God didn't touch their gardens, they didn't eat. Uh, I remember back in the day, Brother Tommy, folks didn't have a wallet full of credit cards and didn't have all these bank accounts and all this stuff. You know what they did? They had to pray food in. They had to depend on God. Can I say, when you're praying like you should pray, and you've got your nose in the book like you should have your nose in the book, and you live and depend on Almighty God for your substance, guess what? You don't have all the nervous conditions that folks got today. And I say most pastors that I talk with, do, what is hurting the average church in America is folks with nerve problems and folks with Facebook problems. Hmm. Listen, I say it, I say it, I say it. There, there's blessing and cursing in everything. And you can use Facebook for God's glory, but most people don't. And the problem is, 
me pick on somebody. I'm going to pick on Miss Bev. She's always so sweet. You're getting initiated tonight, sis. The problem with Facebook is people will spend hours looking into other people's business, and they talk to God for five minutes a day. That's the problem. Now, if you talk to God hours a day, and then talk to others and look at others minutes a day, your life would be different. But there's so many people that is so neurotic. Them songs that were sung tonight should have encouraged your faith to realize God's going to show up and He's going to move in. God's God. But most people, they'll say, well, I know that, but I'm just, I just can't get over this. And they're worried about this. And they're doubting this. And they're worried about this. And there's folks that uh, 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 they'll go through spells where they come to the altar and they're asking God, am I really saved? They're doubting their salvation. Uh, uh, they're doubting this and they're doubting that. And they're doubting whether or not God can. You know what the problem is? You don't spend any time with them. Uh, Miss Annette and I tell each other we love each other every day. Can I say, if I go out here tomorrow and say, well, I don't know if she loves me. I'm a fool. For 32 years she's been telling me she loves me, and for 32 years she's been proving to me that she loves me. Nobody else would put up with me. Trust me. Uh, you ask my Aunt Lynn or my cousin Sherry, I'm not an easy person to be around. She's around me all the time. She loves me. She's chosen to love me. She's proven her love. And if I go around wringing my hands, I don't know my wife loves me. I'm a fool. And can I say this? God has showed you He's loved you. He's told you He's loved you. He's proven it every day. Uh, he allows the sun to come up and shine on your life. Uh, uh, he has blessed you. He has met every need you've ever had. He's never forsaken you. He's never left you. Uh, every time you call, He answers. Uh, and if you go out of here wringing your hands down, whether or not God loves you, you're a fool, my dear friends. Mm. He's wonderful and worthy because of his stability he's proven he's God and I say this he's wonderful and, is, and he's worthy because of his safety look again at verse number 2 brother Thad I might not preach short tonight I'm sorry but I might not uh, I'm having a good time I'm talking about the Lord the Bible says the Lord is my rock my stability and my fortress can I help you the Lord never slumbers nor sleeps so if he's always on guard and he's always on watch and I'm in his hand, in his hands in the Father's hand and he's my fortress uh, and there's nothing that can get to me unless it goes through his hand. Uh, uh, there's nothing that can come my way unless he allows it. Uh, and if he's always on watch and always uh, doing all things well, what in the world am I worrying about anything? He's my safety. God will never allow anything to come in my life that I can't handle. Right, mm -hmm. right. That I'm not spiritually mature enough to handle it. Right. And He won't you either. Right. Uh, he's my safety. Right. Because of His safety, He's wonderful and He's worthy. Can I say this? He hides us from the enemies. Can I say this? He holds us in the storms. And can I say this? He helps us in our distress. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, In my distress I called upon the Lord uh, and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of His temple, uh, and my cry came before Him even into His ears. Look at verse 16. Uh, he sent from above. Uh, he took me, drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, uh, from them uh, which hated me, uh, uh, for they were too strong for me. What's David saying? Uh, he's saying, In the midst of my distress, uh, when there was no hope, uh, when there was no way out. Uh, I called on the Lord and He drew me out of it. Uh, he was my safety, my dear friends. Uh, he's wonderful and He's worthy because of His stability, because of His safety, but all oh, because of His salvation. Look what He says in verse 2. Uh, Lord's my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Where would we be without Him? We'd either be in hell or headed that way. Uh, uh, I like what Brother Greg says. Somebody tells me to go to hell. I'm not going. And I've had a few tell me over the years. Huh? Not going. Why? Because Jesus saved me. 
He's my salvation. Uh, notice I didn't say my baptismal certificate's my salvation. Uh, notice I didn't say my church membership's my salvation. Uh, notice I didn't say that because a butterfly landed on me, I'm saved. Uh, notice I, I had somebody tell me that one time. Uh, notice uh, I didn't say because I saw a rainbow one day, I'm saved. Uh, no, I'm saved because I realized one day I was lost. Uh, hey, my granddaddy's been preaching on getting saved. Uh, and I asked my mama, what's he mean? Uh, and she took me to the Bible and showed me Ephesians chapter 2 uh, that next Saturday night uh, uh, in the church service. It wasn't my granddaddy doing the preaching that night. Uh, uh, somebody else got my lap that night. Uh, I realized I was lost. Uh, hey, I made my way to the altar. Uh, I called on the Lord uh, and he heard me uh, and he saved me uh, and he changed my life. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, he's wonderful and worthy. Uh, because of his salvation. Uh, hallelujah, what a blessing. Uh, I didn't know him in the free pardon of sins. Uh, if you're here tonight not saved, I'd run to the altar and get saved. Uh, his things are winding down. Uh, hey, the Lord's about ready to come and take his church out of here. Uh, hey, you need to get in that faithful number, that uh, those few, that remnant uh, that are saved. Uh, can I say broke the chains of my sin? Can I say this? Uh, he birthed me into the family of God. Uh, can I say this? He buried all of our past. Uh, hey, uh, say, is it from the east to the west? No. Uh, is it behind his back? No. Uh, he buried it out there in the midst of nothingness, uh, and my sins are gone. Hallelujah. Uh, he's wonderful, and he's worthy. Can I say this? He's wonderful and worthy because of his sovereignty. Look what David said in verse 2. He's not only my deliverer, he says, My God, my strength, and whom I will trust. And there's a lot of folks get kind of scared about that word sovereignty and the sovereignty of God. Let me help you something. God's a sovereign God. Uh, he knew the beginning from the end because he's Alpha and Omega. Nothing's ever occurred to God. He's God. God took nothing, made everything. He's a sovereign God. He's a self-existent sovereign God. God needs nothing, and He made everything. Uh, can I say because of His sovereignty, because He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, He is wonderful, and He is worthy. Mm, he's my God and my strength. Can I say this? That sums it up. He's my dependence. I couldn't get out of bed if it wasn't for God. Uh, I couldn't have a, a, a congruent thought if it wasn't for God. Mm. He's my dependence. I depend on Him. Mm. Can I say this? He's my devotion. Uh, hey, all I have, all I ever had came from His hand. And He deserves my very best. Uh, I want to be totally devoted to God because He was totally devoted to me when He went to Calvary. Uh can I say this? Uh, he's my deity. He's my God. I'm not ashamed of Him. And bless God, I don't want Him to be ashamed of me when I stand before Him and His Father. I don't want to be ashamed of Him in, his, in this life. He's my sovereign. He's wonderful. He's worthy. I thought about this. He's wonderful and worthy because He's my shield. Look what it says in verse number 2. He said, My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. And then he says, my buckler. Hmm? He's my shield. Can I say, he shields me from all danger. Uh, he's given me the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But I've got news for you. He shields me from all danger. I don't know how many times I've been driving down the road, pull off and get a candy bar, pull off and get something. To get back on the road and find out there was just a wreck just occurred up the road had I stayed on the road that would have been me who do you think put it in my mind to pull off the rope hmm? uh, I don't know how many times he has shielded me from danger whether or not you realize it we have an enemy be sober be vigilant your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour he hates you he wants to devour you. Everybody that's saved in here tonight, the devil's got a bullseye on your back. He's trying to take you out. 
What is stopping him? The hand of God. He's my shield. Hmm? Huh? Have you ever seen any of them old westerns or seen them movies where somebody will take a bullet for somebody else because they care about them? Jesus has taken a lot of bullets because he cares about us. Uh, no wonder he said, cast all our cares upon him for he cares for you. Uh, listen, he's our shield. He shields us from danger. He shields us from defilement. Listen, we spend so little time in the things of God we'd trip over every every snare the devil would lay before us and we'd fall to sin every day by the grace of God we are what we are the Lord shields us from a lot of them snares the devil throws out there hmm? uh, he shields us from defilement uh, he doesn't want you to ruin your testimony any more than re really deep down inside you don't want to ruin your testimony but you trip over yourself a lot of times but the Lord shields you huh and can I say this? He shields us from all them darts the devil throws at us. He's our shield. He's wonderful. He's worthy. Let me say this. He's our strength. Oh, yeah. Look what David said. He's my buckler. But he goes on to say, and the horn of my salvation. Anytime you find horn in the Bible, it's always talking about power or strength. Hmm? And can I say it says he is the horn of, my dear friends, of our salvation. He's our strength. He strengthens me to overcome. Hmm? What a blessing. Hmm? Trouble comes our way. There's something from the glory world that wells up in that spring that's inside of us, that flowing water that propels us over what would overcome us. He's my strength. He strengthens me to overcome. He strengthens me to overlook some things now, when I was younger I had a real hard time overlooking things brother Tommy I didn't want to overlook them I wanted to hit them head on and by hitting them head on it was either with a right or a left and if that wouldn't do it it was with a car hmm? uh, but see as I've gotten older learned a little bit about the Lord he has caused me and strengthened me to overlook some things Hmm? You know, some people just can't help it. So instead of me getting all sideways with them, I just overlook them. Hmm? There are just some folks that do things in ignorance. So I just overlook them. There are some folks that just can't help it. So I overlook them. Because my relationship with the Lord is so valuable to me, Brother Clint, I'm not going to let any of that affect me. You know, it's not worth it. Just overlook it. Hmm? Uh, it's, it's not turning the cheek. It's just, not, it's just ignoring it. Just overlook it. There's some people, Brother Brian, just ignorant. I just learned to overlook them. Used to, I couldn't tolerate ignorance. I mean, especially in America, the educational system we got, but... But now we got Dawn as a teacher, so the educational system has went way down. You know what I'm saying? You with me? You with me? Uh, uh, Peter got, uh, I mean, Zach got all the smarts from Peter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's not saying much. Uh, no, I've just learned to overlook folks. I've learned, Brother Phil, there are sometimes people are saying things they don't even know what they're saying. And sometimes the devil will put a weed right in the middle of God, God's garden. And that weed seeks to trouble and defile all the beautiful things in the garden. I just learned to overlook them. I uh, heard an old preacher one time say this. This was years ago. He was from Texas. He was an old man, probably 86, 87, when he made this statement. He's in heaven now. He said he was from Texas, and Texas had a lot of horses. When you get a lot of horses, naturally you get a lot of manure. He said, a lot of your preachers spend too much time in the manure. He said, just take care of the horse, and the manure take care of itself. That helped me, Brother Bob. There's a lot of preachers running around just dealing with all the manure. 
So I've, I made up my mind years ago, I'm just going to take care of the horse. Uh, I, could, I could get an ulcer today worrying about the crowd that only shows up one Sunday a month and worried about the crowd that's in and out and up and down and all that. And I, and I could absolutely lose all sleep and I don't get much anyway. I could just drive myself crazy, pull out the rest of my hair and go nuts uh, worried about all that. Uh, but I've learned He strengthened me to overlook that. Uh, hey, that crowd might not even be saved. I don't know. Uh, and uh, uh, He's caused me to concentrate on that crowd uh, when they've worked hard all week, uh, when they've got bad news, uh, when their heart broke, but they'll still come out on Wednesday night uh, and they'll still shout it out. Uh, they'll still sing unto the Lord. Uh, uh, the Lord kind of reminds me like He did Elijah. I've got 7,000 hadn't bowed their knee to bear. Hey, there's a horse worth taking care of. Uh, just focus on those that want something from God. Uh, just focus on that faithful crowd. Uh, it'll be all right. Uh, he has strengthened me to overlook some things. And He's also strengthened me when I get overwhelmed. Because hmm? I don't care who you are, there are days you can be overwhelmed. Hmm? He's strengthened me. He's my strength. He's wonderful and worthy. And the famous words that Thad loves to hear. And lastly, He's wonderful. And he's worthy because of his sureness. Look what he says again in verse number two. He closes out this wonderful verse saying, In my high tower. Now, if you understand anything about them walled cities back in those days, if a city didn't have a wall, it was easy prey for anybody. So they'd build these, these walls around these cities, and everybody knows about the walls of Jericho. And many of these walls would be so thick that they could ride a chariot around them, on the top of them. And on every wall, at, at so many feet, there'd be a tower. And there was always to be a watchman in that tower, and he's scanning uh, 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 his portion of the uh, land to see if there's an enemy showing up, see if there's an attack on the horizon, uh, uh, see if there's a storm coming. Uh, 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 they would always be on guard. And David said, the Lord's my high tower. I can rest, I can be at peace because the Lord is always on the wall. Because of His sureness, because He's absolutely in control, I can be okay. Mm -mm. Are you listening? With Him watching over me, I'm confident. A lot of people have a, lot of, a, a, a difficult time being confident. They're afraid to witness because they don't think they know enough about the Bible. Friends, you don't have to know all 66 books and all 1,100 chapters, all 773,692 words to be a witness. All you got to do is tell them what Jesus did for you. Uh, but see, there's some folks that are not confident, but because the Lord's watching over me, I can be confident. Hmm? Can I say this? Because He's watching over me, I can be calm. I know you're just tired of hearing it, but I'm not tired of telling it. When Miss Nett told me I had cancer, I didn't fall to pieces. I didn't go get in my prayer closet and beg God to touch me. I told her, come on to ladies' meeting. I told her, I said, it didn't catch God by surprise. It'll be okay. You know how I could do that? Because he's, he's, he's watching over me. Uh, by the way, that just didn't happen last night. He'd been watching over me for 47 years. I believe he's watching over me when I was lost. Uh, I really do. Uh, I did a lot of stupid things. He's watching over me. I can be calm. Can I say this? Because he's watching over me, I can have courage. I can face tomorrow. I can face whatever comes my way because I know he's watching over me. Because of these things. No wonder David said, I will love thee. I will call upon thee. And therefore will I give thanks unto thee. 
ask you this. When's the last time you told the Lord you loved him? When's the last time you told him how wonderful he is? When's the last time you realized he was worthy to be praised not only in the sanctuary but on the job? When's the last time you really took refuge and confidence in him because he's watching over you? When's the last time you thanked him for being far better to you than you deserved? When's the last time you called upon him at all? Listen, he's wonderful and he's worthy, but he's also waiting. He's waiting for you and I to give him the adoration he deserves. And when the psalmist said he inhabits the praise of Israel, when you start praising him in here and out there, he comes and sits down and shows up and helps you with all your infirmities. Never fall short of praising the Lord because one day you're going to really need him. Might be today. Tonight might be a good night for you to tell him you love him. Tonight might be a good night to call upon him. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, it'd be a great night for you to call upon him. Tonight might be the night the Lord just, just really confirmed in your heart you're lost and you need to be saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible. We'll show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. And you can experience this wonderful and worthy Lord that we talked about. When's the last time you thanked him, dear child of God? being so good to you I promise you we get to heaven we realize we didn't thank him enough and we didn't call on him enough and we didn't love him enough tonight might be a good night to start getting stocked up on those things let's all stand brother Clint come get a song of invitation while he's coming folks are already coming to the altar let's have a word of prayer father we bless you we love you we are so thankful that you're our God. Lord, I pray for your people. You'd encourage them greatly and help them. Lord, we do live in this wicked world, and we are under attack. So I pray you'd shield your folks. I pray you'd be that fortress and that high tower for them tonight. And then, Father, I pray if there's somebody here tonight that's a stranger to the grace of God, they're unsaved, Oh, they might be a good moral person, just don't know you. I pray that tonight would be the night of their salvation. I pray they'd come, give their heart and life to Jesus. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks do business with God, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Turn to what page, Brother Clint? Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.